Hey guys, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. Uh, this is the episode three of the file upload vulnerability. In the previous two episode, we talked about how you can upload the backdoor, uh, like you know, with the no restriction, and uh, what if the developer has put the content type validation, which are uh, we have seen like you know easy to bypass. Uh, now today we're gonna see how to bypass the extension validation when the developer has put something like a blacklisting. So that's what we're gonna see. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you like my video. Uh, and let's get in so what is the extension validation so the extension validation is when you have the file name at the end of the extension developer is just gonna check like you know uh, from the list of the allowed extension now with the blacklisting they're gonna determine certain extension which are not allowed to be uploaded so for example if you have a uh, Facebook or, or uh, any other website where it allows you to uh, upload the image file now image has there are several type of images like jpeg or gif uh, png and uh, several like you know uh, different types of image uh, image types now what the developer would do uh, is they would uh, like you know restrict certain types so for example they would not allow javascript they would not allow java file or an exe file or php file or those sort of things so they would put make a like you know blacklist uh, uh, list somewhere and they would validate each file when it's uploaded against that list and if it uh, detected then the file would be rejected now this thing is easy to bypass so for example if I want to up upload a malware uh, with the PHP extension what I would do is I would change the extension to JPEG and then upload it it's gonna work right yeah probably but then the difficult would be how you gonna execute that file as a as a malware because now you have changed the extension so uh, the system is gonna think okay this is the image file so they're not gonna process the file and that's what we're gonna see in the demo today uh, so let's jump on to the VM and see how it's done all right so this is the uh, simple file .html page which I've created uh, what you can do is you have you can upload any file to it and in this case uh, we're going to use the same backdoor file which uh, we have been using in the previous example just to maintain the consistency uh, now when we hit the upload it says please upload a gif file now in this scenario as we talked earlier let's just change the uh, file type so um, make a copy of the file and let's do the gif now let's go back again uh, let's upload the GIF file all right so it went through this time uh, let's see if we can see that file yes it's here and now let's try to execute this file oh so what we saw here is uh, this file cannot be displayed because it contains errors because of course this is the PHP backdoor file but we renamed to GIF and now the server doesn't know how to execute this now what we can do in this situation is simple uh, what we have to do is probably uh, let's uh, go to the uh, root directory uh, sorry yes and let's go to the downloads and create stxs file now what we want to uh, do in this file is uh, let's add a data type so what I've done here is I have added a type to the stxs file um, and invoke and I've given the instruction if you encounter any GIF file invoke the PHP subsystem or processor so it's going to execute as a PHP file now your questioning must be like what if there is already stxs file that's a good question so uh, generally if you have a like you know already uh, stxs file in in the project uh, once you upload the another one like in in the directory where the application is running then that stxs file will override the previous one and this must be configured in the 
conf config of the Apache's web server. Uh, and this is very common setting across all the web server that you would see. So that's not something that you would have to worry about. As long as you can upload the SGXS file with this added configuration, you should be good to go. All right, so let's save this one. And let's go back to our file.html page here. And let's upload the STXS file upload. All right, I think we are successful. Let's see. All right, so STXS file is again a hidden file, so you might not be able to see in this one, but uh, of course we can see from here. So uh, if you want to see, let's go to the, all right. So here you can see uh, we have the STXS file. Now let's try to access this file. And this time, if you see, we were able to execute the GIF file as a PHP, right? And now it's not only thing about the GIF. Uh, so for example, let's go back and create another copy of this file. And this time we want to create the ABC extension, right? Now let's try uploading that particular file. Of course, it's going to go through because uh, the blacklist does not disallow the ABC file. Now the same thing, uh, if you add so if we go back, I think, where am I, root, okay. And, uh, so if you add like, you know, ABC here and then re-upload, sorry and then re-upload and like you know try it out it's gonna work out because uh the stxs file would work as in whatever the extension it's gonna get if it <coughs> sorry if if it's gonna find uh like you know abc extension it's gonna uh, call the php subsystem to kind of execute it so uh uh, now we have seen like you know uh, even the extension validation can be bypassed and it's not a great way to kind of implement the secure file upload functionality now this a security best practice and not just for the file upload but any like you know if you are configuring the firewall or if you are anything that you are configuring where you have the black option versus blacklist versus whitelist i would say always always go with the whitelist approach because you don't know how, what are you dealing with because in this scenario let's say if you have a blacklist for uh, gif as well if you have blacklist for pretty much all the files but there is a possibility there is a slighter chance that you might miss out on something so that's why whitelisting is a much better approach again i'm not saying only whitelist is gonna uh, protect you from and uh, like you know being hacked or something but still it will uh, give you much more protection because you would think i'm only gonna allow the jpeg images and no other extensions so now in that scenario as an attacker I'm, i can't even upload the dot stxs file or can't like you know update the, the stxs file so that's why it become much more secure for you so along with that and uh, other few things that we're gonna see in the future video would help you to implement the secure file upload. Now, this is not the end of the file upload vulnerability session. Uh, pro, uh, next week, we will see one more example, one more test case, like, you know, uh, what are the, the protection that the developer would can choose and how do we able to bypass those. So uh, tune in, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, uh, please, please hit the thumbs up button if you like my video so I can know uh, what kind of content you guys are looking for and thank you for your time i'll see you guys next week thank